Welcome to Swift Now Training Center. Light, camera, and motion. This is lesson two in programming mobile games. This video is based on the source code we created by lesson one. This video shows you how object-oriented programming is applied all over. You will learn how to bounce, spin, and skin 3D objects. You will learn how to control custom camera and custom lighting. To save time, a lot of code has been prepared in advance, especially during the second half of this video. You will learn how to use these and many other classes of object. Baby Skylab is the name of the game. Let's begin remaking this game. Run Xcode, create a new project, single view, my sky lab, New group, original, all of these original files under here. New group, mission control. New file, Swift, Control Center, Okay. This is the only place to insert a call to launch. Command, click, go back here. Let's make it lower case. Yeah. 
Okay. Submission control, new file, Swift, main screen. <clears throat> now attach the same to the view and call it let's see if we have any errors uh -huh. from my experience I know what the problem is Basically, this is the main screen, and on this screen, this is the main view. And this main view is under control by this view controller. And this view controller is passed over to this method. And it's passed over to this method. And then this method consider this view to be SCN view but the default is not SCN view and this is something that we need to do from the very beginning click here and click on the identity inspector under custom under custom class select SCN view and by the way we don't want to use we don't want to see the launch screen anymore so now let's try again we should have a blank screen without any problems good Let's make the background of the main screen all black so it looks like outer space.
and start a new group components the biggest one is the D Skylab complex The first thing we want to do is to draw an axis, the y axis. So let's create that object. Axis node. Create an enum We can have three different accesses. Copy from here. And we need to declare what types of axis we're dealing with. The default is make it a Y axis by default. No more errors. Now let's run it. <clears throat> Should looks black. All right. Let's put in some standard distances. Here. So 
uh, we're going to have several up main objects on the Skylab. The basic distance between them is 20 units. And four times that would be half of an axis and eight times this distance would be the full length for the axis that we're going to display in space. And now let's bring in the code for drawing the axis. This code has been demonstrated already in lesson one. So, this is the code from lesson one with some improvement. The logic begins here. This is the geometry of the, the uh, axis. Color it. Attach it to a new node. Position the node. And then put it in the scene. So now we're ready to put in the first line of logic. Let's review it. When the screen did load, then we launch Skylab. When we launch Skylab, we set up the main screen. We connect the, we create a new scene and attach it to the main view. And then we generate the Skylab complex. When this object is instantiated, it will insert all three axes. But for now, we only do one. This is where we have the logic for drawing the axis. Okay, let's see if that worked. Great! It seemed to work. Let's use... but that's an x-axis, not a y-axis. Let's switch over to iPad Air. Okay, <coughs> it's done in the first lesson. We're going to allow user to use the cursor to control camera. And we're going to use default lighting for now. And let's add two more axes. And for the X, we want to make it yellow.
and for the Z axis, we want to make it purple. yet what happened ah you see the reason why x y c try again there we go this is strange i want yellow to be on the x-axis the logic must be a bit messed up here. Let's swap x, y here. All right. Now, add a new group. New file. Shiny material. based on this class from SynKit. This line should make those axes a bit shiny good let's draw a sphere You can copy the code from lesson one. Tidy up. So after we draw the three axes, we want to do the modules. 
the first one is a sphere <coughs> and we got the code from lesson one already so what's the problem here hmm All right, we got a sphere. Now we draw the pyramid. This was also done in lesson one, so we can copy the code over. We don't have bounce and spin set up yet. So. Now we can add this to the Skylab complex. Check it out. Whoops. Let's do some animation. Add some code to bounce things around. Let's test the code. Mm -hmm. The uh, the graphics looks kind of funny. Probably because we don't have the right setting for light. Auto enable default lighting set that to true. Much better. Now let's add some code to spin that pyramid around the axis. <clears throat> Should be Y. Okay. Now we can go back to this code and undo this comment. Check it out. <clears throat> so 
there we go. Now let's add <coughs> the box. Again, this is from lesson one, so we can copy the code over and improve a little bit with spinning and bouncing. difference between what we're doing here and lesson one is that in lesson one we put everything in a single file without any organization of the source code and we did not use object-oriented programming here we organize such that every object is in a separate file and we use a class for each, each object basically applying object oriented design now let's add some text Mm -hmm. This looks like what we got in lesson one, except that things look shinier and with some animation. Now we're going to do something new. Access dot node <clears throat> this is the code that I created <clears throat> in advance to bring in minor and major markers for the axis here's the bottom This is to be done in the Skylab complex. Bring, bring this here. So at first we created the three axes and then we bring in the four modules and now we're going to insert exit markers and to do that we're going to call the, the routine that makes six dots at once in six direction from the origin and we're going to do four minor markers and then we're going to do uh, 
couple major markers. The minor marker is in cyan color and the major marker is by default in red. Uh, it's needed here. Okay, let's go back here. This missing. Okay, we have markers on every axis. So let's turn on the text. There we go. I'm going to explain how this works. Starting from the control center. This is where the Skylab complex is instantiated. And when it does, it's going to create the axis, add the modules, and now it insert the axis markers. The default is two major markers and 
no text. Let's go there. The math was off a little bit, so I added a minor marker unit and major marker unit here, and then inserted some trace logic, and then In here, I use the full axis length instead of half axis length as before. And in here, I added comment. And here also. Now, let's run it and see. So the basic distance is 20, the full axis length is 160, minor marker unit is 5, and major marker unit is a quarter of the axis. And that is how it should be. Major marker is a quarter minor marker is 5 let's go back to the code this loop generates the minor markers in cyan color one, two, three, four in each direction. There are six directions. That's why the name of the function here is max six dots. This loop is to generate the major markers starting from 40 this is 40 80 1 2 the default is 2 so now let's go there So for every dot created, we need to know which sim to put the dot in and the distance from the origin and which direction, what color. And the index values is used to generate the text. If index is zero, the text will be skipped. So let's go to here. So as soon as this dot is instantiated, this constructor is executed. The first thing is there is to draw a sphere with radius one and color it as specified the default is cyan color and then put that drawn to the scene and based on the direction position that dot on the right axis 
only when index is greater than zero and access mark the text visible is true then we draw the text to go with that dot using the same position that's the logic for access markers what we did so far is to reorganize the source code that was created by lesson one to get to lesson one you can go to this web address and click on game and click on first lesson at this web page you can see the the source code that was created and presented in this video in a single sequence and now it is organized based on an object-oriented design we move all the code out of the original view controller except for only a single line and from here it goes to control center so far the launch sequence has only two steps first the main screen is set up and then the Skylab complex is constructed when the main screen is instantiated in order to have an object to keep track of properties of the main screen it creates a scene and then attach it to the main view and the main view is in fact this object right here which is controlled by this controller when you run this program what you see is everything that is presented by the camera the default camera through that camera you see what you see and the default camera is automatically positioned in such a way so that you see everything that is there let's look at the control center and let's change the number of major axis markers make it four in each direction let's run it again you see the camera is moved away further so that you can see the bigger complex that's the behavior of the default camera and when you use the mouse to or your finger to move things around you're not moving the complex the skylab you are 
controlling the camera you move the position of the camera and that's why you're able to see the back of, of this complex as you can see the center is basically at the same place it's not moving anywhere it's the camera that moves around this complex let's create a custom camera call it main camera and I have the code written earlier so this camera is based on this class and then two properties are set up so that you can control the distance between the camera and the sky lab as well as the Z4 values which controls the field of vision how far can your camera see straight ahead this field of vision will be measured in terms of the length of an axis as presented in this software the distance between the camera and the center of the complex is also presented in terms of axis length to use this camera I need to add some more code first on the main screen I need to, to set up a variable for main camera and then initialize it in here Next, I need to add code to the control center. And then run that code. It is part of my launch sequence. Let's keep the camera from moving and we're going to use the custom camera when we run this routine. It's going to attach the camera to the scene to put the camera in the scene and it keeps the camera about one axis away and you can see twice as much 
So let's run and see how this custom camera works. As you can see, I place my camera too close to this complex. That's why I cannot see number four in front, but I can see number four behind. If I change my field of vision to be the same as the distance from the camera to the origin, then I cannot see number four in the back at all. In fact, I cannot see anything behind the origin because I am 160 units away and this complex is 160 units across but my camera can only see within 160 units now I'm going to make the camera bounce and make sure that we can see more the camera is further away and the camera can see much more let's run it and see right now you see the camera is bouncing up and down between the origin and 20 units above that As you can see, now I can see everything because I increase my field of vision. I can press option and pinch in to move the camera further away or move the camera closer to the origin I can also move the camera around the complex okay so how does that work Basically, this is the camera. And for the position of the camera, it's is set for the node that holds the camera the camera is placed on a node and the position of the node controls where the camera is the Z4 property on the camera is what controls how far 
how far ahead you can see with the camera. And when you attach the camera, the bouncing is on, so apply. If so, desire. And last but not least, we're going to add custom lighting. What you saw so far it was the use of default lighting. Now I'm going to create a spotlight. And the code was prepared earlier and you can study this code as time allows and to use this spotlight I use I added this code attach custom lighting and call it as part of my launch sequence. The reason why I have this error is because I'm using a class from the scene kit but I did not import that framework. <clears throat> and for this spotlight, I'm going to make it a very small spot using white color and this is how I control how far the spotlight is away from the complex the number three means three times the length of an axis so let's run it and see right now I am using default lighting and my camera is very close to the complex so I'm going to turn on the default lighting and bring the camera out A bit further away run again there we go that's
now you see the spotlight at work. I can move the camera around. As you can see, the position of the spotlight is fixed. So right now, we're moving with the camera around the complex, but the light source is at the same location. Now let's bounce the light source and bounce the camera. We're bouncing both the camera and the light source so that you can see that programmatically you can control the position of your camera as well as the position of the light. Horizontally, the light is moving left and right between x equals 0 and x equals 20. Vertically, the camera is moving between y equals 0 and y equals 20. That's the end of lesson two. Now you can do light, camera, and motion. That's it for lesson two in programming mobile games. Thank you for watching this video.